Gems and jewels are pretty exciting. They represent a rare formation of specific minerals. Minerals are found everywhere on Earth. They're found in the soil, they're found in air, they're found in lakes, they're found in our bodies, they're found in space, they're raining down on us every day, all the time. Minerals make up almost everything that we encounter. And so studying them is that much more important because in order to figure out how Earth is moving forward, in order to figure out where our position is on Earth and how our technology moves forward, it's all gonna come from minerals and mineral research. When I came to the museum and I, I had access to all these gemstones, I was completely blown away by by what sorts of research we could do with them. We can use gems as ways of looking into the geologic past. And that's what's really exciting is that they're so clear, they're so easy to see into, that anything that formed when the gem formed is also really easy to see and really easy to study. There's other things in that stone, like gases and liquids, that also tell us important information about how it formed or what we can use it for, for technology or environmental applications. Gems are categorized on different metrics. One way a gem could be categorized is based on their minerals. For example, corundum is a mineral name, but gemstone names of those would be sapphire and ruby. So if it's red, it'll be a ruby, and every other color of corundum would be considered a sapphire. Different gemstones and different minerals grow in different ways. Is it formed in an inorganic process or is it formed in a biological organic process? For example, a biological process would be a pearl. A pearl is a naturally occurring gem. It's beautiful as it is. It's polished by the mollusk that formed it and therefore considered a gemstone. An example of an inorganic one would be diamonds, and sapphires, and rubies. Those are gemstones that are formed purely by geologic processes over many millions of years. Diamonds form deep in the earth and then a volcanic eruption throws them onto the surface of the planet. And it only takes a few minutes for these diamonds to make their way to the surface. If it took longer than a few minutes, the diamonds would be redissolved back into the crust and we would never see them. Almost all diamonds on the surface of the earth are older than one billion years old. So they're a time capsule. Anything that happens to be preserved within that stone is also one billion years old. Gems are beautiful, the cuts and polishes of existing minerals. That's really all what gems are, is modifying existing mineral forms and making them reflect light, making them refract light in different ways to, to bring out the color. My name is Robert Prokop. I specialize in finding the treasure hunt of gems around the world. People collect gems because there's an amazing color in gems that we can't get in anything else. It's three-dimensional light. It's more than satisfying, it's find that rare gem that I've never seen a color like this before, or a brilliance or the size. That combination makes it rare. I take them through about 15 different light sources, just as you see that illumination underneath. I'm looking under my microscope with light to see if I could see the interior of the stone and see where the best color is. If we cut it into a square shape, we're trying to hold the color in, and that makes the color more intense. A round, brilliant diamond is probably the rarest in a color diamond because it was designed to pull all the light out of it, not to hold the color. The science is really the foundation of our gemstones. The exciting part about the exhibition is this combination of art and science. The gemstones in science are, are used for a wide variety of applications. They're used for battery development, they're used for data storage. There's so many new and interesting discoveries that are constantly being made from a technological point of view. Quartz wafers are used to keep track of time by applying a little bit of electricity across a little quartz crystal. It vibrates at a known frequency and that's how we can keep track of time. There's so much about this exhibit that draws people in. We have the rough minerals that go along with the cut gems. So you can see the before and after, how they look like in the earth, and how humans have polished them to make them into jewels. When you're looking around this hall and looking around this exhibit, you should look at the different colors. Look at the brilliance. Look at how light is reflecting off of the crystals. Does it look like a metal? Does it look like it's really hard? Does it look oily and greasy? How these minerals grow differently it directly reflects back onto the environment which they grew in. So some minerals grow under extreme pressures and temperatures, while other minerals grow at sub-zero freezing temperatures in space, in a vacuum. There's a lot of history in gemstones, there's a lot of geology, and there's so much interesting science. 
It's so important for us to keep finding new gemstones, to keep researching. There is so much to still discover for gems.